Right. And, well, and I think that's the case, right? So sometimes the best stuff comes out of when you get out of the comfort exactly. zone, right? I you mean, need to be uncomfortable exactly. to see what you're actually made of. So Tarantino and a Moldavar had a baby. That's what femininity is like. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, you bring up the Me Too movement, and, and, and it, so the opportunity. Uh, how, how is that on the other side of the pond there? Are, are you guys seeing a, a pretty significant movement and change in the, in the industry, or kind of the same old same? What's your experience in that, or what are you seeing over there with that? Um, I, think, I think things are going to have to start changing. Whether you know whether the, the powers that be wanted so or not, it, it's going to happen. You know they can either get on board or get left behind. Exactly. Um, so I think it's one of those ones where if America leads the way, Britain will usually follow. And you know it's good to see that you know so many people have, have been brave enough to kind of speak up about you know what they've experienced and what they've seen. And also, it, it also goes to show that, you know, sometimes you, you need new ways of thinking and you need new people to come in and kind of shake things up. And just because something was done a particular way doesn't mean it always needs to be done that way. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hello? You say yes? Hello? Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you, sir. <laughs> we can't, you kind of dropped Don't out Don't go for a away second. from We're us, like, man. Wait a minute. That was such a good answer. He hung up. <laughs> <laughs> was that a mic drop? <laughs> 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 All right, Chris, what you got? Well, not only are you a screenwriter, director, and blogger, but you also a uh, published author with a book called The Thought Book. Why don't you tell our audience about your uh, book there? Uh, so the full book, uh, I'd like to say it was a hobby, but it wasn't. Basically, I, I used to get... So from... I'm like the only... Well, not the only writer, but I was like one of the few writers in my, like my family. Like It's not really a, a thing that's done... Uh, in my family so a lot of the time you know you were getting advice to go and try other things and do this and do that it was never advice of people saying you know stick with it and you know really you know really really give it your all and so the four book was kind of for other people who were pursuing their goals but you know they're being given kind of like discouraging remarks just because and a lot of the time it's it comes from a place of not necessarily insecurity, but they've never seen it being done before. So the full book is about kind of putting yourself back together and learning to prioritize your own voice instead of other people. So wow. that's yeah. Oh. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, well, but so you just quite the broad range of writing. I mean, such different styles with, you know, you're talking screenplay and then and then a book and a, and blog. I mean, it's just a wide range of of different writing styles. That's impressive. I mean, honestly. So uh, congrats on that. Um, I, I kind of want to take it back a little bit to what we were talking about with the movement, because over here, um, also along with the Me Too movement, there, there, there's been a huge call for and movement towards um, a better job with diversity amongst the industry. Yes. Um, and I'm curious, and, and I think a lot of our listeners would be curious as to your point of view on that, on that side, what it's like to, to be a, a black writer um, in the industry. Have you, have you run into struggles with that? Has race played a problem or is it an advantage or how, how does it work over there for you? So, my point of view will be quite unique because I'm I'm more I'm pretty much known as an indie writer. I haven't really crossed over into the mainstream just yet. Um, a lot of what I've written has been on spec, right? And you know, um, it's different than writing for a project or being attached to a project as a writer. So my kind of experience has been with opportunities and with feedback and with um, like training and all these other development um, exercises it's been that my voice has been quite hard to place it's like I've said I'm pretty much a writer because no there's no one else that writes the way I do and there's no one else that tells stories the way I do otherwise I'd probably I would probably be doing something else 
So a lot of the time I find that there isn't a lot of appreciation for the way I come at writing. It's not very traditional. Right. It's, you know, I'm, I'm here to kind of, you know, break some eggs and make omelets, whereas, whereas other people are more, uh, more linear in their approach. I like to kind of shake things up and try and do things that I've never seen on the screen or things that I think have been left undiscovered for a long time. I think that's, I think you, you always, when you're, when you're different, no matter what race or background you're from, when you come at things different, I think for a long time it's, it's hard for people that have always seen it being done a particular way to accept. But specifically on diversity, I think we need to do a much better job, especially in the UK. Um, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, from my, from when just looking out as a viewer, I, I see a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, period dramas and, and, you know, basic things in a time period where, you know, the the power dynamics were, you know, and the racial, the racial dynamics were all stacked in a particular direction and it doesn't really allow for much diversity and, and different points of view. Right, Apart from right. Separation, I don't believe in that. I think you should try and tell a range of stories. You know, you have your period drum, have, you know, something that's modern that represents, and, you know, it's just kind of a mix and a match, and you make interesting new things instead of trying to do the same thing over and over and over. Yeah, a- absolutely. And I think that, you know, how you were describing yourself is going to it's going to take people like yourself and and people you know along the same line of thinking that trailblazing attitude to do things differently and and while it might make people uncomfortable sometimes it, it's it's what's going to cause the change and what's going to bring about the you know the positive movement forward and I love the fact that you're not scared to be you and just and, and you're, yeah, you're no just going to go for it yeah. like Absolutely. you said crack some eggs and make some omelets I, I right. love that approach because yeah. right. I, I think we need more people like that Mm-hmm. I agree. But at the same time, I, you know, if, it, if 85 to 90 percent just come in and, and kind of dovetail to the, the way things are at the moment, then you won't read it's, it's even harder for the 50 percent. Right. Where it kind of needs more of a balance. So, uh, yeah, I guess I guess the only thing is to, to keep keep pushing and hopefully inspire people, people to do the same thing along the way. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, and you know, interviews like this uh, help do that. So, thank you for the the honesty and the and you know and, and really you know laying it out like that. It is very similar over here. Well, uh, we can say the same thing. Um, it, it, it's very similar over here. Hell yeah. Uh, and and we're attempting and hopefully, like I said, by doing interviews like this and by having people tell their experiences, try to change that and at least a little bit of a way that we think we can help and and, and do that. So. Thank you so much for that. I mean, yeah, that, that, that was raw and real, and uh, I really appreciate the, how you answered that and your approach. Hell yeah. No By the way, I've written a project for an American audience, because uh, I, I love my awards and, um, and commendations have been America. I get a lot of love in America. Awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, I, yeah. I can see why. I mean, you know, America, you know, we're, we're, we kind of like rebels. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we kind of like people that are trailblazers and kind of go that way. So that I can I can see that. <laughs> yeah. <My bad. laughs> so, uh, Rebecca, you got another one? Um, oh, let me think. Uh, oh, there's one. What? <laughs> 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 Why don't you take us? Hi, Hi, Jay again. It's me again. <laughs> um, why don't you take us through the process of how you start a screenplay? Oh, um, oh, sure. no see the hard question. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> Damn it! You stole my thunder. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> made you think. Sorry. My is I'll normally have a feel, so there'll be a story circling my head. It'll be something that. You know, I, whether it's a dream or um, or something that I keep a point of view that I keep coming back to, that's when I know that that's something I want to work on. Mm. So where I start with that is I just do um, a lot of people call it a vomit drop. You just pretty much just pour out everything in your head as you see it, stuff mm. without you know stopping to check grammar, punctuation. None of that matters. The first drop is going to be it's going to be um, pretty much just raw data. It's going to be kind of feedback. Right. I'd let that rest for maybe two, three weeks, come back to it, edit it, start giving it some shape. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, even then, I might 
then leave that alone for maybe another three weeks and then I'll come back. I'm, I'm always writing other things, so it never feels like I'm just waiting around to get back to something. So I'd say maybe my first three drops are just me getting the shape, getting it all together, getting it coherent, blending in the characters with the reasons and the things that I would like to see in a screenplay and then from four onwards it's just it's just cosmetic changes, um, mm-hmm. making short um, scenes shorter and snappier, adding dialogue, adding um, extra details. If I think that you know there's specific details that will help the scene, I add that in. And maybe by the time we're at five or six, it's you know it's just vanity at that point. It's just oh, you know I use this word, why don't I use this one instead? Or there's right. three words that mm-hmm. I use one here. Oh, and I get rid of all my widows. I don't like having that. One word on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Understandable. Understandable. Yeah.